I just don't have many complaints. I just liked it all. So that's my Malazan update. That was fun. I have finished two things. First of all, I finished The Girl Who Fell Beneath the Sea and it was spectacular. Um, so the premise for this is that there is a, uh, okay, there's this village by the sea that um, the myth is that the emperor of this village and the, uh, the sea god used to be best friends and because of events the sea god is now under a curse and he's fallen asleep and now this village is um, there's these terrible storms that cause the sea to be brutal and to wash away part of their towns and to kill people it's terrible so what the people do is I believe it's once every year they sacrifice a young beautiful maiden into the sea as an offering to the sea god and that calms the storms for a year and the idea is that once the true bride of the sea god the true sea god's bride once she is is offered then the storms will stop forever and that'll be like the deliverance from this terribleness um that's like the basic premise well no it's not the premise is that our protagonist uh the woman that her brother is in love with well they're in love together they like each other lots um she's the one that's going to be sacrificed and so our protagonist doesn't want that tragedy for her brother so she decides to sacrifice herself and she jumps into the sea and she offers herself um, to the sea god so now she's in the spirit world which is where what happens when you go into the sea you go into the spirit world and the sea god is asleep and she wants to try to uh, break this curse that he's under as well as also like find some freedoms of her own so this book is amazing. It feels like a Studio Ghibli film, as I've said in other reading vlog clips. Um, it feels like Spirited Away, the way that things are so flowy and nothing is fully explained and the way the spirit world is shown is just um, kind of, it just is there. Some of it makes sense, some of it doesn't, but it all just works. It's beautiful and the world, exploring the spirit world, especially there at the beginning of the story, is my favorite part of what this book offers. Um, the characters too though, I got surprisingly attached, not only to our main character who's great, but to the side characters that we meet along the way that um, help us or hinder us and, and we get to know them just these 400 pages I get so attached to so many characters even characters that at the time that I was reading it before I got certain reveals they didn't feel quite as fleshed out or at times I even accused some of these characters of being plot conveniences but then once things unfold once more things are revealed when things start connecting these plot conveniences that are not fully fleshed out characters suddenly are like I'm literally crying over their stories tears rolling down my cheeks I'm a pit human so I loved it <laughs> um, this is a YA book and you know one theme with YA is that a lot of times uh, the romance aspect aspect of the story is is a central focal point and the first part of the book I think is primarily just set up and world building and then the second part of the book is more plot centric and more romance centric and I definitely liked the first half of the book better than the second half but I still love the second half because the plot was still really interesting and even though I do wish there was more build up with the romance I wish that the chemistry between the two characters had had more to it before we were in the I love you's um, it was still like their chemistry was still written really well I just wish that there was more before that if that makes sense so I'm still happy and I still enjoyed it and I still think it was I, everything was written well I just don't have many complaints I just liked it all and I wish it was longer I think that's the main thing even the ending actually felt a little bit rushed to me and I really really wish that the ending was longer that the author had taken taken more of her more time with it it's also a very I think niche style book with the way the spirit world is written I mean if you like Studio Ghibli then you could potentially really love this um, but the way the spirit world is written and um, the way that it's 
the way that it's really just more about how everything feels and the emotional journey than it is about some like really interesting driving plot. Um, the fact that the romance becomes such a big part of the end and um, the fact that this book, I just think that this book is more vibes than it is anything else. <laughs> and like, I'm a very environmental reader. If an author can make me sink into the story, then I'm there. And uh, I, I could see this book not working for a lot of people, but it's one of my favorite books of the year. Next book is The 13th Election. Hunter Hunter. Sorry. I'm being a little bit too erratic and the swing is moving. Hunter Hunter, I finished the 13th, ch 13th chairman, chairman election arc. So if you're not one of my Hunter Hunter people, timestamps in the description to skip over this part. Um, but I finally finished this arc. It took me so long because I was on vacation. I just wasn't reading very much, but I finally finished it and I loved it. It obviously didn't go in the direction that I had expected in the last reading vlog. I was theorizing and saying the different directions that I saw it going, how, you know, at the moment it felt unsatisfying, but I don't have full context yet. Once I get that context, context, who knows what's going to happen. I was fearful of certain things and like nothing went the way I expected it to, but that's okay. I loved it. I loved this arc. I still, even at the end of it, don't really feel like the election element of it was that interesting, though the ending, you know, well, what I said in the last vlog still stands true. What I learned at the end about the manipulation that was happening, the games that that one character was playing does make it a lot more interesting, but it was really Killua and his sister's um, story that gripped me the most and that remained true to the end. I'm so shocked that Killua actually left gone. Um, I was just saying this in my Patreon, but I, I find it very interesting that in order for Killua to leave this codependent friendship that he had with Gon, he had to choose another relationship where he had to sacrifice and give you know, so much of himself still. So in order to leave one codependent relationship, he had to enter into or, or choose another relationship that was still highly dependent. And that's not me knocking anything or criticizing anything. I actually, I love, I love Killua's character. He's probably my favorite character in the series. And um, I'm so glad that he chose his sister. She obviously needs someone to protect her and that's amazing. Uh, I just find it really interesting, Killua's personality and his need to take care of people. Um, it's just, it's just a really fascinating part of his story. Um, also, I loved this arc. Um, in the last reading vlog, I was talking about how I was feeling in the moment and I was talking about some theories and, you know, I was going in completely the wrong direction of, of where it ended up going. I, w I just throwing this out there. I got so many spoilers in the comment section of the last video. Um, people, I, I understand the desire when somebody is is misunderstanding the direction that something is going to go. I understand the desire to warn them that it's not going in that direction and make sure that they're going to enjoy it. Uh, I understand the fear of, oh no, your expectations are wrong. That's going to make you not like this thing. I just want to be super clear. If my expectations are wrong and plots go in a way that I'm not expecting. Like I'm still, I still have all the potential to love something. And anytime I'm giving you my real time reactions, I don't have all the information yet. So here's my thoughts with my lack of information. Uh, sometimes, sometimes the, I'm going to be thinking in the wrong direction, but I'm just giving you, I'm not giving you my full fleshed out. I know everything and now I'm reflecting on everything thoughts. So I got, I got a lot of comments on that video giving me information that I would have loved to have learned organically instead of um, learning too early. So if you ever catch me uh, interpreting something wrong or if you ever catch me misunderstanding material in the series, please correct me. But if you ever catch me with my expectations going in a different direction than the series is going to go, just let me read it and let me get there on my own. Um, I love this series and I am enjoying the twists and turns so much. And if my expectations aren't, if, if the series doesn't go in the direction that I expect it to go, that's not an automatic sore spot for me. But anyway, I loved this arc and I'm so excited to move forward. Um, but I need to, I'm actually going to go ahead and try to watch the anime for this arc. 
which I haven't delved into the anime at all other than just a few key scenes, but I'm gonna go ahead and watch the anime for this arc because I think that it's just a really good arc to experience twice, especially with how the election goes. It'll be fun to kind of like look for things now that I know more, and then I'll do the review for that. So I'm excited to discuss it and I'm excited to get into the, I'm, the next arc is gonna be the one that's ongoing, right? So I'm super excited to read that too and get caught up. I can't believe I'm so close to being caught up. Anyway, this was a really long opening clip. Welcome to the vlog. I just spent an hour talking on the phone with a friend, so my brain and my voice are tired. But I will talk to you about books. I have started The Mask of Mirrors, which actually technically I started it a couple of weeks ago and am only just now talking to you about it because I've been reading it very, very, very slowly in the background as I've been more focused on other things. But I just finished part two. I'm about to enter part three. I am half done and it has taken me this long to get to the point where I say, okay, I'm gonna, I'm gonna devote a lot more attention to you now. So just so you know, this is a pretty slow build book, but this was pitched to me as, if you like The Lies of Locke Lamora, you'll likely like this, and that has really helped me in my perspective entering the story. The Lies of Locke Lamora is a very slow build. It's intriguing, it's interesting, it's funny, the characters are fantastic, but as far as the plot goes, it really doesn't take off for a while. And going into Mask of Mirrors with that same kind of expectation has been very good for me because it's similar in that way. So the main character is Ren and she is a con artist and she is she's gone to this city to trick her way to trick her way into a noble house so that she can uh, provide for herself and her sister. Her sister's name is Tess and she's amazing and she's a seamstress and she is helping Ren with these impersonations by sewing her these really elaborate clothes to make her look like she is wealthy, to make it look like she, to play the part that she's trying to play. These are two street rats, I'll put them this way, um, that are just, they're just trying to make a life for themselves through a very elaborate con. And the house, the noble house that they're trying to trick their way into also has a lot going on with it. They used to be very wealthy, but they've lost a lot of their wealth and um, they're now losing their standing in society, but trying really hard to maintain it. Whereas Ren is like, sure, you've lost some of your wealth, but you still have more money than I've ever seen. And it's a story, it's called Mask of Mirrors, and it's a story where everybody in this book is wearing a mask. Everybody in this book has another agenda, is, is displaying one side of themselves and behind the scenes there's something else going on. And in this story we're with Ren and Tess as they're as they're trying to pull off this very elaborate con, but we're also seeing them as they truly are when they drop the facade, when they take the mask off, when they're with each other or with someone that they trust. Um, and we're also trying to peel back the masks that other people are wearing as well. And it's not exclusively from the perspective of Ren, we have a few perspectives, so we get to see more of what's going on in the story, which is very helpful because it's an extremely politic, heavy story um, so there's just it's it's a tangled web the further we get into this planning and into this con the more complicated it gets it's also very 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 elaborate world building um, and I would say that's probably the book's biggest weakness at least in the beginning not because the world building isn't good it's very good but it's just so much up front that it feels I it feels a lot like I love this story, I love these characters, but I'm so overwhelmed by the world building that I 
I feel like there's no way I can retain all this right up front. I'd rather it unravel a lot more slowly. Um, I've been told, this is one of my Patreon buddy reads, some people have already finished it. Um, I should have finished it by now, whoops. I've been told that uh, about where I am, a little bit further in, everything starts to kind of click together as far as the world building and it doesn't feel quite so overwhelming, but it is pretty overwhelming there at the beginning. But the characters are amazing. I love Ren. I adore Tess and need more of her in this book. Uh, I'm so intrigued by everybody. Everybody in the story is fascinating and all the different fa facades they have is confusing at times because there's a lot of characters to keep track of and there's a lot of like individual things that are happening that I'm trying to keep up with. Uh, so I'm not sure. This is a book that I feel like will be better on reread even though I'm really really enjoying it this first time that I'm reading it, um, but it's very political and it's a lot of slow moving, it's not a fast paced book, it's a lot of very slow moving, intricate, um, like a game of chess, people just moving their pieces and then evaluating the situation and seeing how other people respond. And um, it's really interesting. It's been a good book to read slowly and take my time with and try to take in and soak in everything. Uh, and if it's anything like The Lies of Locke Lamora, then after we get through all this very slow buildup, hopefully it will pick up as the con probably goes south. So I'm enjoying it and I'm going to be giving it more focus. I'm actually already near the end of the week here. So um, I'm going to finish this book, which I haven't talked to you about yet, this week and then I'll probably, I'll definitely finish this book next week. So we have Beach Read, nope, Book Lovers, which I'm currently reading. I'm half done with that one, with this one as well. Um, and I'm loving it. I have read Emily Henry's um, People We Meet on Vacation and I really enjoyed it. I bought Beach Read and I haven't read it yet, but I'm currently reading Book Lovers and it's so good. So uh, the story starts off with our main character introducing herself. She's a literary agent. She reads books for a living. She reads through first draft, well not first drafts, she reads through unfinished books that authors send her trying to get published, sees the gold in them, sees the potential of what they can be, finds the right editor that she thinks can craft this into, can help the author craft this into the perfect story, and, and uh, works together with them to like fight for this book and get it published. You know what a literary agent is probably. Anyway, she's a literary agent and she's amazing at what she does and she is try she has an, an an author that's amazing that's done incredibly that she has fought for to get to this amazing position. I mean, the author obviously did a lot of work too, but we're from her perspective. And now um, she has a new book, it doesn't matter. So Nora um, has this job, this career that she fights for, that she gives her life to, that she spends so much time in. And then she also has a sister that she would live, so that she lives and breathes for and would die for. And her sister is going through a really hard time in life and is begging Nora to go on this month long vacation with her to this small town. And they live in New York City and she, agrees to do it even though it's inconvenient for her job it's not what she would ever choose for herself but she agrees to it and now they have this like checklist of things that they want to do in this small town world and it's all it's very literary it's all like um things tropes that they're trying to play out basically and and the book is very self-aware of the fact that it's a literary book so it's constantly referencing other books and referencing book tropes and subverting them and the book starts off with Nora saying you know the 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 story the typical trope of you know the guy who's in love or not who's in love who's in a relationship with this hard cynical um gruff woman who can't let her manicure be messed up, who has Botox, who always wears heels, and then he goes off to a small town and he ends up saving a small business and he falls in love with a local and he moves away from the city and he dumps his terrible girlfriend. She's like, you know that trope? I'm the girl that gets dumped. <laughs> I'm the shark in my industry that, uh, that you know, doesn't slow down to smell the roses and that gets dumped for the you know, cutesy girl or whatever. So um, she's that girl. And it's been so fun to follow the shark and to uh, see things from her perspective and see her life perspective and uh, let her, I don't know, it's been so fun to follow the shark. So I'm loving it. Um, and she's now in this small town that she hates and she wants to get back to New York City, but 
uh, her nemesis in the publishing industry is also there and they, they have this amazing dynamic, this incredible ban banter that is hilarious to read. And they kind of sort of hate each other a little bit, but also they have like the best chemistry and you know how it goes, it's a romance. So the banter is amazing. The chemistry is written so well. It's a slow burn and it is, it's just, I'm loving it. I'm flying through it. It's awesome. I'll definitely finish it this week and also, we need to talk about Malazan. We will do that in the next clip, too. So, books talked about. Done. Hope you're having a good week. Finally, thank you for patiently waiting. Uh, well, that was not sarcasm. It sounded a little bit like it. It wasn't. You've been very patient. Memories of Ice, book three. I am on chapter 16, so halfway there. I have been wanting to talk to you about a couple of scenes for so long, but I just, you know, I am who I am, I guess. Oh, right. So the scene that I've been waiting to talk to you about. He lurched upright, swung around, and began walking. A lumpy, yielding ground was underfoot. He did not look down, simply pushed on. The Denal Warren was all around him, savage and deadly. Yet, held back from him, unable to reclaim his soul, the poison howled. Malik could feel his fingers once more, still pressed against the broken throat of his friend. Yet, within his mind, he still walked, step by step, inexorably pushed onward, this is the journey of my flesh. Who has done this for me? Why? The warren began to dim around him. He was almost home. Mallet looked down to see that he knew, to see what he knew he would see. He walked a carpet of corpses, his path through the poisoned horror of his warren. Costly, so costly. The healer's eyes blinked open, bruised skin beneath his fingers, yet no more than that. He blinked sweat away met Trot's gaze. Two paths, it seems, one for me and one for you, friend. The Bargast weakly lifted his right arm. Mallet clasped it with his iron grip. Your back, the healer whispered. You shark-toothed bastard. Who? Trot's croaked, the skin around his eyes tightening at the effort. Who paid? Mallet shook his head. I don't know. Not me. The Bargast eyes flicked down to the split and bleeding flesh of the healer's arms. Mallet shook his head again. Not me, Trots. Oh, oh, oh my golly! Oh my goodness! Unbelievable, these things. I just, it's, it's not just the emotions of the scenes, it's how it's written. The imagery of he, him walking through the corpses and the split flesh, and it's just like, I'm just, it, it's the emotions of it, it's the, it's, I feel, I feel him asking who, who paid? I feel it. But it's also the descriptions of what they're doing and the world around them, and it's just, it's just, it's so much, it's so good. But we also have a load, whoopsie. But also there's just, there's so much more that we could talk about. Um, characters that are being faced with the inevitability of, the, of what's before them and uh, fighting to maintain their humanity in the midst of it. Characters that are faced with these terrible, terrible choices and characters that are suffering, I'm still just, just um, the, the maybe or the my bees perspective, all that she's going through as she's disintegrating, I guess. I don't know how to as she is losing everything. And then even Tattersail or Silver Fox, um, 
Forgive me for not asking earlier, but when did you last look upon my mother? This morning. The, I'm sorry, Tistia and D, I don't know how to say it, replied, she can no longer walk, and this has been her condition for almost a week now. She weakens by the day, Silver Fox. Perhaps if you were to come and see her, there is no need for that, the fur-cloaked woman said. Who attends her at this moment? Anyway, she goes on to say, Circumstances, Silver Fox said, her expression tight, are about to grow tense. I don't know. I feel so... I feel so much for these characters that are, you know, fighting to just not eat the flesh of other humans or who are seeing the war crimes, like bringing... I don't even want to say it. It's so hard. Like bringing, bringing an infant that has been a casualty of war to others to show the brutality and just there's so many things there's just so many painful things happening and and the way he describes their emotions going through it and the callousness of others and the struggle of knowing what's right to do and it's just so much but it's so good and terrible and terrible it's terrible so it's my Malazan update. That was fun. Um, book lovers. I finished it. I <laughs> I loved it. Uh, there was there was one chunk about 50 pages that I completely lost interest in the book. And it's I don't it's not it's it's a me problem, I think. It was just there I like when I read a romance, I want it to be doing more than just zeroed in focused on the romance. I like when it's doing other things. I like when it's um, tackling other subjects and Emily Henry is great at that and with book lovers there's a lot going on and um, it's fun but there were about 50 pages where we weren't focused on the romance at all and it was just this and it was right as the characters were probably going to, you know, they, they, was finally, they were finally going to be together. They were finally going to couple up, um, you know, not fight their feelings. And then it was like, actually, let's talk about other things for a while. And then it was all of her family drama and his family drama and the town's family, not family, the town's drama and his backstory and her backstory and everything going on with her sister and everything, what, what's going on with, it, I won't say that actually, and a bunch of things. And it was just a real heavy focus on, on that. And it's like, we're just gonna not talk about the other thing that this book is doing. And I just completely lost interest. Even though I was interested in all of those things, I just, those 50 pages, it was just too long of just pausing the romance to talk about everything else. But then eventually, of course, we got back to that and then the ending made me cry. It was really good. I was actually kind of nervous for a little bit there at the ending because things were building up to have a certain end that I didn't think would have fit the book. All the things that the book was doing and talking about and the things that our main character needed to do in order to have character growth, I thought the book was going to go in the easy, the, the easy ending for a book like this. And I was like, that's not gonna fit this book. It's not gonna work. Why would you do that? And then it, I was very, very happy. The ending made me cry. Which is really just not an accomplishment at all. I am a baby. Okay, I did not read any more Fruits Basket this week. Um, it's nothing personal, I just didn't, I just didn't. I think I read one more chapter, but not enough to talk about. So I'll, I'll make sure to read some more next week so we can talk. But these are the books that I either started, finished, continued, talked about. These are the books that I talked about in the vlog, plus the Hunter Hunter. I would love to continue chatting with you. Um, so chat with me more in the comments about any of these books. I post videos every Thursday on this channel and starting to next week I will also be posting on Tuesdays. Then there's the main channel. That'll be linked. You might know about that one though.